The moratorium that Pierre Trudeau committed to in 1972 has been Liberal Party policy since 1972, and it's going to stay Liberal Party policy. Sure. Every British Columbian is aware of this coastline, aware how how uh, how easily uh, uh, a catastrophic oil spill here would just devastate the marine environment, and we all have a historical memory of the Exxon Valdez up in Alaska, and that, I think, shaped the consciousness of British Columbia and Canadians for, for several generations. And so um, a moratorium seems like good public policy and maintaining it indefinitely into the future. Liberal leader Michael Ignatieff says as Prime Minister, he'll take better care of our coasts. We just think it's not safe, not pr prudent to have heavy tanker traffic in that uh, crucial area of BC's north coast. Ignatieff says the Liberals won't ban tankers outright, only those carrying crude oil. And they'll hold the number of tankers carrying other substances, such as coal and natural gas, to the levels they're at now. The, the consequences of a spill or a grounding would be catastrophic. It's an issue that could pick up easy political points. The billions of liters of light sweet crude that have caused so much damage in the Gulf of Mexico and beyond is prompting outrage around the world. As you all know, I'm Hedy Fry, the Member of Parliament for Vancouver Centre, and I'm really sorry that I couldn't be with you today to stand and support you in protecting our coastline in British Columbia. As you well know, Michael Ignatieff has said repeatedly, and he made an announcement in Victoria about two months ago, that if we form a government, a federal government, that we will ensure that the ban that was set up in 1972 of a moratorium against tanker traffic on the northwest coast will be kept, either through legislation or through regulation, or both. We're committed to that. That when the Exxon Valdez actually have that huge oil spill uh, up in the northwest coast, that even today, Two feet below the clam beds, there is still oil. The oil does not disappear, as people say. And until we have technology that would ensure that if there is an oil spill, there is a total cleanup of all of that oil, we have to be very careful that we do not destroy our ecosystems. These strong measures are urgently needed and long overdue. Today's announcement represents the most significant investment ever made to protect our oceans. We're going to strengthen the Canadian Coast Guard and boost their presence to ensure our waters are there protected 24-7. We're going to get tough on businesses and industries that pollute along our coast. We're going to preserve and restore our marine ecosystems by introducing a new, new legislation to increase vessel owner responsibility and liability for abandoned and wrecked vessels. We're going to collect and share better information on marine tanker and vessel traffic with coastal communities so we can work together to prevent spills. And most important, to effectively co-manage our oceans. This includes launching indigenous community response teams here in BC to respond to coastal emergencies if and when they arise. All this is in addition to many other important measures that will protect our coastlines and the people who call them home. This ambitious, forward-thinking plan is all about protecting the environment, ensuring efficient transportation. Our Oceans Protection Plan will meet or surpass the world and as a grandson of BC I'm thrilled at what this means for folks out here. Over four years ago it was a gusher that sent 227,000 liters of crude all over Inlet Drive and flowing down into Burrard Inlet. Basically it was about 30 to 40 feet in the air. The pipeline was ruptured by a contractor hired by the city of Burnaby to build a storm sewer. Today, the contractor, an engineering firm, and the pipeline owner pleaded guilty to Environmental Act charges. In asking for the penalties, the Crown Prosecutor says these were sophisticated organizations. They had the resources to do a better job. They simply didn't. Prosecutors are seeking penalties of over $500,000. That's on top of cleanup costs topping $15 million. 
Pipeline owners Trans Mountain and operator Kinder Morgan have been talking about expanding the amount of oil going from the pipeline and to tankers in Burrard Inlet. There is a huge concern about uh, expanded use of that pipeline and expanded oil tanker traffic through the Burrard Inlet. There's so much pressure uh, on these companies, you know, because of the uh, opposition to the Keystone XL pipeline in the United States, the, the uh, Enbridge pipeline in the north. You know, the Kinder Morgan Company and the associated companies are actually, you know, trying very quietly to increase the amount of oil that's moving through the Vancouver Harbor um, without the public ever having anything to say about it. Squeezing the heavy oil out of all that sand and clay is a dirty, expensive process, and for decades, most oil companies scoffed at the idea. Today, with the price of a barrel of oil approaching $100, there's a mad dash underway to extract every drop possible. Government is clearing the way and oil companies are making billions of dollars, but neither seems to be keeping track of the staggering environmental cost of a modern day black gold rush. Many of us have no idea just what's inside the huge ships that move through our port, but there has been a quiet and rapid expansion in the number of crude oil tankers moving right through Burrard Inlet. Just this morning, another massive tanker leaving Kinder Morgan's Westridge Terminal in Burnaby. This is where they fill up with crude oil coming by pipeline from Alberta. The ship will head to sea through this narrow passage on Saturday. That's the part that worries Bill Gannon. Big vessels, dangerous cargo, and so little room for error. Why are we taking the risk, risking our whole environment? Gannon is an accountant and longtime environmentalist. He's watched the tanker traffic increase from his Coal Harbor office. Crude oil exports through the Port of Vancouver have been happening for decades, but never like this. They've more than tripled in the past five years, with 65 tanker loads leaving in 2009. And Kinder Morgan plans to expand even more, with the long-term goal of more than doubling capacity on its crude oil pipeline. That's the pipeline that ruptured in 2007, sending oil raining down on people's homes and into Burrard Inlet. With the number of tankers growing so quickly, Gannon fears a spill is inevitable. The fishing industry will be totally down the drain. Um, the beaches, all our beautiful beaches are gone. This is the Kinder Morgan tank facility on Sumas Mountain in Abbotsford. When the pipeline was built in 1953, not a lot of people lived here, but that has changed. And opponents say an expansion of this magnitude is just reckless. Yeah, less than 100 meters. John Vissers lives next door to the Kinder Morgan oil tank facility on Sumas Mountain. Every day, 300,000 barrels of oil flows through the Trans Mountain pipeline. Now Kinder Morgan wants to nearly triple that amount. Visser says it's a reckless idea, especially with all the new development in the area. They're talking about almost tripling the, the, the size of their facilities and uh, they're doing it right in the middle of a, of, of a growing uh, suburban area. It's not a matter of if there's a spill, it's a matter of when there's a spill uh, and you only increase the likelihood of it as you increase the volume of traffic. In 2007, a contractor ruptured the Trans Mountain Pipeline in Burnaby, sending oil spewing into the neighborhood. And in January, there was a leak at Kinder Morgan's Sumas Mountain facility. The company says expanding the pipeline's capacity won't mean safety standards are compromised. We're not going to jeopardize public safety by having a bigger project than a smaller project. But John Vissers isn't so sure. If something's wrong, we are supposed to alert them. And we believe, of course, it should really be the other way around. Uh, they should have electronic monitoring. They should have all sorts of safeguards in place. And they should be telling us if there's any problems. Since I'm married into the family, I've always known it's been there. This land has been in Don Forbes' family since the 1800s. A farm at first, it became a golf course in the 90s. Underneath the lush green, a pipeline. Standing, standing right here, we're right, you might line up those two markers there, we're right on top of the pipeline right here. So right now, 300,000 barrels a day is going underneath us. It's been there since the 50s and is owned by Kinder Morgan. And Kinder Morgan is finalizing plans to build another pipeline along the old one. That means twice as much oil will pump through here. To build it, they would have to tear up his golf course. And there's nothing the family can do about it because Kinder Morgan owns the right of way. I'm not particularly thrilled to have my business disrupted for how long I don't know and, and how we negotiate the restoration will be the big question. Do we get a bag of grass seed or do they re-turf it or what do they do?
See the distance between us? This is about, about 60 feet. That's, That's how wide right? they can dig. There's a lot of golf course. <laughs> Won't be there for a while. On everyone's mind, what happened in Burnaby in 2007. Thousands of liters poured out when a Kinder Morgan pipe was ruptured. And in January, another leak, this time in Abbotsford. If there's an oil spill on the west coast, it would have huge impacts on all life in the area. And of course, in a heavily populated area like the Metro Vancouver region, if there was an oil spill, it would have you know, really drastic consequences potentially for human health. Kinder Morgan line will go down here. Chilliwack's mayor says there have been no issues in her town so far, but she will be watching carefully. They need to consult, they need to look after the environmental safety, and uh, they also need to think about how it would affect the life of the city when they're doing it. Calls and email to Kinder Morgan were not returned, but the new pipeline is not a done deal. Once plans are finalized, it will go through a lengthy environmental assessment. Kinder Morgan has big plans to expand its pipeline from Edmonton to the Burrard Inlet. That would mean we'd see a lot more oil tankers in this harbour. So the risk of an oil spill is a concern from increased tanker traffic, but that isn't the only issue. The possibility of actually dredging the harbour is highly controversial. A presentation to investors by the Kinder Morgan president revealed that would involve widening the channel by dredging. CTV News has learned the port is testing samples of sediment at the second Narrows channel to prepare for possible dredging. Dredging can be quite harmful. You know, there's a lot of toxins, heavy metals, um, you know, well above uh, acceptable limits. Kinder Morgan hasn't applied for a permit to dredge yet. Right now, it's accepting bids from companies prepared to buy oil from its pipeline, hoping to build a strong business case before it decides to apply to expand its pipeline. They look like blobs of tar. These rocks are on the shores of North Vancouver. The Tsleil-Waututh First Nation says it's crude oil from a spill going back to the 1950s. And just a few weeks ago, oil from a mystery spill was spotted on the shores of their reserve. A heavy heart. Like, our inlet is... Our inlet is in peril. It's, it's dying. That's why they're opposed to any plans to increase tanker traffic in Burrard Inlet. The risk of having that much um, oil floating through our inlet, it's too great a risk to take. Vancouver boasts the busiest port in the country, and as a nation that is a great exporter of oil, many of the ships you notice in the harbor are tankers. Last year, 65 tankers exported nearly 4 million tons of crude oil from the Westridge Marine Terminal in Burnaby. But pipeline giant Kinder Morgan is quietly planning an expansion that could lead to substantially higher tanker traffic and possibly greater risk. It's the prospect that there will be more oil tankers of, of a limited size and, 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 and with more movement of oil tankers comes with more risk. Kinder Morgan has a pipeline running from Alberta to Burnaby with a capacity to carry 300,000 barrels per day. The company wants to expand, more than doubling its pipeline capacity. If that happens, oil tanker traffic would jump. And with the spill in the Gulf of Mexico, you can see why environmentalists would be concerned. What we know about crude oil tanker traffic in water is the same as what we've been learning about the BP oil spill down in the Gulf, is that oil and water don't mix. While Kinder Morgan asked for more time before commenting, Port Metro Vancouver issued a statement saying that protection of the environment is a top priority. We work closely with the marine industry and government to develop new and innovative ways to continually improve safety procedures. For Greenpeace, that's not good enough. We can just look at, just a few years ago, the BC Ferry Queen of the North that sunk in northern British Columbia. That wasn't, um, that wasn't an error of technology, um, it was a human error. And so no matter what, there will always be, there is no technology modern enough or good enough that is going to be able to protect our coastline. According to this marine spill expert on Vancouver Island, our ability to deal with a large oil spill is inadequate. Our tugboat practices and guidelines are outdated, and our navigational risks are great. There are some areas that are particularly problematic, like going through Harold Strait and um, down to and that dog leg that's required there at Turn Point. It's a very much of a, a choke point for other major vessels to come through. It has six knot currents. Oh wow! Breached. This is. Crazy. 
crazy. Unbelievable. Look at the amount of water. And that's, and that's just probably from this morning. This is where the, the pipe is, right in the middle of the reserve, the heart of the community. Back in 1952, our chief wasn't allowed to hire a lawyer. That paper was put in front of them and they were told to sign. Back then it was a $1,200 payment, one-time payment. It's an insult, it's a, it's a slap in the face to our people. Third week of November, we should have had over a foot and a half of snow. But you look at it now, it's unpredictable. That's the only reason why I could see that they would want to keep it above the reserve, which will impact our water aquifer is because it's the cheapest route. To us, it's not about the money, it's about the water, our drinking water. And that's, that's why the fight is on.